Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope you guys can hear me okay. Bring you a little closer. Oh, my God. Um, hi, Rose Maria and Nazi. Hi, hi, Leah. So, uh, it is freezing here. Not so freezing as last night um, when we, I don't know, I don't think we got too freezing. I think it got pretty close, like uh, 33, 35 degrees. Um, and I'll tell you, from my youth living on a farm, when I lived on a Quaker farm in Maine, when I was growing up, uh, you know, they get much more cold weather than we do here in Virginia. One of the things we had to do starting August 1st, every morning beginning August 1st, you have to get up before sunrise. If there is frost on the ground, we would have to go out and water the entire, all the crops before the sun rose. So I'm not saying get up 10 minutes before sunrise, like an hour or two hours, depending on how much crop you have. If you do not water the crops before the sun comes up, the plants get frostbite and some of them die or the yield goes bad. So I'm very aware of how hardy plants have to be. Last night I went, I put coverings over, um, not all the plants, because a lot of the plants that we have are pretty hardy, like the fig trees are okay. Whew. Okay, my hair once again is driving me insane, something that I know we can all relate to with this corona. Okay, hold on. There, sorry about that, not meaning to be vain, but I see my reflection and when there's like one little thing of hair sticking out, it drives me insane. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the plants, thank you Nazi about thinking about my garden. Yeah, I'm like a good person to uh, care for plants during the seasonal issues because I've had more than enough times when I've had to wake up at like four in the morning and go out and water the plants. <laughs> so yeah, no, we just covered like, um, I have four blueberry bushes that uh, they're hardy, but they've all just gone into blossom. So we'll get some, uh, like somewhere in the next month, we're gonna start getting blueberries. And so I wanna make sure they were protected um, and all of the uh, the seedlings and the sprouts I brought indoors because they're fragile. But as you see, romaine lettuce and cilantro doing well, tomato and garlic. Like here, look. See, these are garlic. If you want to grow garlic yourself, it is really easy. Just get a planter, uh, take a garlic, you know, like garlic in a bowl. Peel it off, peel off the paper if you want it to be a little quicker, uh, and just put it in the uh, root side down and the little sprout side up. And each little garlic piece will become an entire bulb of garlic over a period of a few months. And until then, you can snip the greens. You might see, I've, well, you can't really see there, but. I've been snipping the garlic greens and putting them in my uh, stir fries and stuff. And um, it has that same garlicky flavor, but really fresh, really, really fresh. So good. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to, oh, hold on, before I get started, I'm just going to show you a little bit about what I'm doing. And, um, I've got grapevines over there, and several types of lettuce, romaine, and then some other types. I don't know what it was on the first table for a little store, so I got them, and they're a little bit bitter, but and some ground greens and yeah. Uh, okay, trying to get comfy here. I am so bundled up. Uh, so for those of you who love Garrett Duncan like I do, 
this is a blanket that I bought from him. He sells certain Native American made items that uh, all the money goes to supporting, you know, uh, people and tribes near him. Uh, and if you don't know who Garrett Duncan is, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T, Duncan, D-U-N-C-A-N, of Navajo Illuminations. Friend him on Facebook because Garrett's live streams are like amazing, amazing. He's a featherweight shaman, so he's all galactic. He speaks like literally every light language there is. He's just as I'm an open conduit for channeling, he's an open conduit for a lot, including every light language spectrum. Um, and he's also a featherweight shaman, so he works with uh, nature elements, birds, air energy, water energy, and uh, Sasquatch. So, <laughs> and he's just delightful, absolutely delightful. I watch his live streams whenever I, whenever I get a chance. I was there last night, he was um, drawing cards, and he drew a card for me. He drew the bear card, which is perfect because my mother is bear totem. Uh, her name, Ursula, is the minor bear in the constellation. Uh, and also a saint, Saint Ursula. We have the bear statue in our living room. Uh, but bear is also about creating new life. And as you see, <laughs> um, so <laughs> having been all through that, uh, today we are working on our third eye chakra. The third eye chakra is so cool. Um, it's how we get to see, like our sacral chakra gives us the gut instinct. So that can give us direction, um, warnings, things like that. Epiphanies, creative flow from here. Uh, but the third eye is a lot of times how you like, like I get a, an epiphany in my sacral chakra, the third eye is in how I get all the details and fill it out. So it's like the sacral chakra might create the plan, like it might give you a line drawing, and then the third eye colors it all in and animates it. A few things to be very aware of with your third eye. Your third eye, like imagine it's open here in front of you, but 360 degrees around your head, it's open, you know, like that. So imagine like a basin coming here and then a basin going out. And in the middle of all that is the third eye awareness. So if you're like auditory, if you hear spirits whispering in your ear, your third eye is the one that activates for that. If you hear being speaking in the back of your mind, your third eye is activating for that. If you um, see visions or if you get downloads that open up, third eye, it's all third eye. The important thing to remember, the third eye is not about looking for anything. If you are looking for a vision, you will only ever see the vision you're looking for. It's about receiving, receiving in whatever form the vision arrives in, and then allowing that to open up and become a vision of fruition. So when I say look with your third eye, see with your third eye, what I really mean is open up and receive and allow it to just be whatever it will be. And what's that? <laughs> yeah. Exactly, like a lighthouse light. And I'm so glad you love this. Um, so like, I don't have my glasses on, so in order to read anything you guys write, I have to get really close and squint. So forgive me uh, for doing that, but that's my reality. So um, remember that the third eye, if I say, what do you see? If you have a feeling deep in you, that's what you see. Or if you hear something, you don't know what. Maybe you're hearing whistling or 
or maybe an actual sound out there is catching your attention all of a sudden, like birds singing. And you're like, well, it's just birds singing. Well, the birds have been singing nonstop, but suddenly it's catching your attention. That is seeing with your third eye. Invite it in, and then the next thing you know, something will happen. I don't know what, a bird animal totem may show up and start chatting with you, or uh, you may suddenly hear the magnificence of all the bird symphony around you that you had not been aware of, and just become beautifully affected by the magic of nature that is around you all the time that you forget to like connect with. And now you're like, oh, I am a creature of nature. I am a being of this magnificent mandala of earth magic. I need to connect more. That's what you see. This sudden epiphany, this understanding and awareness where sometimes a little tiny seed of something will come through. Like, I'll be like, you know what? I'm thinking the color blue. I don't know why, but the color blue popped in my mind. I accept it. What does this mean? And then suddenly, vroom, it will open up and I'll have this entire vision, a vision that may last only a few seconds in my mind, but when I go and I write it down, it will take me an hour, okay? And the color blue was the seed that opened it up and let this happen. Maybe it was a blue sky, I'm on a ship. Or maybe I'm in some sort of a temple where there's blue curtains. Or maybe, like, who knows? Maybe I'm looking at a blue sapphire and that's the beginning of the vision. Like, who knows? It might be one of my past lives coming forward wanting to share with me something. Or... It might be my angel who resonates in the colors of blue and white. Like, who, my angel doesn't, by the way, but some do. Um, maybe Mother Mary or Archangel Michael are coming down. Um, so the more you accept what you receive, the more you will see. If you are looking, okay, I'm looking for something. What do I see? What do I see? Oh, uh... I, my head is now getting involved and now, uh, you know, or if you're looking, it'll be like, I see the color blue and I'm interpreting blue as bloody blah, blah, blah. They're going to go off track. Receive and let it be whatever it is. When we open up, we will create sacred space. So you don't need to worry about any false messages coming through. And again, a reminder, the likelihood, because you are like, just by being here online with me, you are already in safe space because our souls are all connecting and your guides are already here, ready to talk with you. They're already protecting you. In this situation, we're not creating sacred space so much to protect you as, although it does, obviously, as to allow you to have total faith and trust in whatever you receive so that all your blocks can go away. Just a reminder of that, that you do not need to do all this work to create sacred space. However, when you do all this work to create sacred space, you know you're protected and you can fully trust and open, receive, and let it do whatever it does without questioning or doubting. Also, when you do all this work to create sacred space, you're building um, the skill set so that, um, like, I'm at the point in my life where I'm pretty much all the time tapped in and, you know, protected. But if I want to make sure I'm fully, like, protected, I'll say open and flow, open and flow. I'm open, I'm flowing, and immediately everything goes there because we've been working together, you know, me and my sacred space have been working together for so many years. So that will happen for you in the future where, you, where you'll say, wow, I used to put all this work into creating sacred space and now like, I don't need to do that because you'll, you've, these exercises are helping you develop your structural integrity 
so that you are now of course then if you're like well i think i need to go into this very dark space to do something then you know or if i'm doing a ceremony if i'm doing work for other people if i'm like if there is you know anytime i connect with anyone outside of me or to any place other than here i will and just a caveat because i don't want the rumor of bonita doesn't create sacred space um i pretty much live in sacred space all the time but the act of then creating sacred space for the purpose of the work you're going to do is very powerful and it gets you in space it's like warming up before you dance so um so creating sacred space is really really good but for your everyday purposes for opening up messaging you know for the daily stuff you'll find over time that it just automatically comes for you okay and you'll also find like people's biggest fear is that they're going to open up for the divine and you know boogity boos demons whatever tricksters will come in so they doubt everything the likelihood of that happening is like so tiny you have to want them to come in you have to be receptive to them for them to come in i have worked with people where they say, oh, my angels turned into demons. They were trickster demons pretending to be angels. At that point, and I have worked with people where that, at that point, I know this person's ego is more interested in battling demons than receiving light, all right? So if you do start getting tricksters, look in yourself and say, what do I need to resolve and heal and release so that these guys aren't even interested in coming near me? So what's this? Um, okay. Hi, Debbie. Uh, this is great. Sometimes I overthink the preparation. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, by building these chakra energy grids, the moment you say, I tap into divine, I'm connected to earth, I'm flowing with love, you know, you're, you become a divine conduit, which is, you know, what I do. So it'll be all good um some of you were with us last wednesday night when carlos the medium joined us uh and if you weren't go on to my facebook page and watch that video because it, he was amazing and delightful um of course i mean carlos is the best and and i will say tomorrow 12 noon eastern time on carlos's facebook page mine uma and rob of uh, lotus wellness we're doing a free mother's day live stream on self-care raising your vibration with self-care and we're inviting everyone to connect with your mothers sisters friends to all watch together as like a mother's day celebration um, or do watch parties on your page to share um, because like I'm doing DNA repair like we're each doing a different aspect of spiritual energetic self-care it's gonna be really really special and you know it's free so come on and join us um, <laughs> thank you Debbie so Carlos and this is getting back to third eye Carlos uh, talked about how, as a medium, he has developed a shorthand language with his guides. So whenever he sees certain uh, images or has certain feelings or gets a certain feeling in his body, he knows what that means. So that is an interpretive communication, uh, which is the same a different frequency a different technique but the same as when i open up and i channel when i open up and i channel the divine messages flow through me when he opens up they give him interpretive visions but it's on an agreed upon shorthand language this is very different from interpreting in your head 
well, I saw some white fluffy clouds. So what that means to me is, you know, the moment you get in your head interpreting, you are going to have the wrong message or an almost wrong message. Just understand that. The way Carlos interprets is the way I interpret. The information comes in, reveals itself, and flows out. That's using your third eye. If you start getting into the logical mind, pull back and say, okay, I need to step back. What is this saying to me? One time I was in a third eye meditation. And um, I, I can't give away names here because I don't have permission. But I got an instant download of someone's past life. And it was instantaneous. It flowed in. And I said, well, I don't know what this is, but let's open it up. And it just opened up on its own. I sat back and enjoyed the show. It gave me a few little details of this person's life long ago in ancient Rome. Okay. And then after we were all done with the meditation, I brought this person aside and I said, you know, I received one of your past lives. Um, would you, you like to hear it? Which, of course, got a big yes. <laughs> and as I started telling it, we talked. It took me like 15 minutes to tell what had been like a 30 second download. While I was talking, I just spaced out and I was like, what was it I saw? What was it I connected with? And I allowed all of that information to open up and flow out my mouth. And then my friend said, wow, that's a really long vision. I said, well, it really only took about, I don't know, 30 seconds of my time at the moment, but it's opening up for you. So in some ways, my style and Carlos's style were the same in that I got my shorthand of like the bullet points of this life, but the moment I opened up and I invited it to flow through me, an entire detailed story came out. Details of what life was like in that time uh, that I myself have no awareness of. It was really extraordinary. Afterwards, I when I did some research, I was like, wow, that's what I saw, that's amazing. So this is where the third eye can be potent. Remember, you don't manage it, you allow it to flow, okay? Um, and, okay, so I'm being told to sing to you two little songs. <laughs> I know I keep promising I'll sing and I never do. Today, today I'm, uh today i'm gonna to do it so there's a song we used to sing when i was a child uh four strong wind four strong winds i think i think it's a neil um uh this is not neil diamond um neil young song and i'm not gonna do the whole thing but it's four strong winds that blow Slowly, seven seas that flow wide. All those things we can't change, come what may. Though our good times are all gone, and I'm bound for moving on, I'll look for you if I'm ever back this way. So think of the meaning of that song. This person is so in love wow suddenly all this uh debris came falling down on me this person is so in love with going out there that their soul their connection is to being out there and any relationship heart to heart person to person must be termed and then gone, but it's okay to pick back up in the future. Versus Pete Seeger, 
The water is wide, I cannot cross over, and neither have I wings to fly. Give me a boat that can carry two, and both shall row, my love and I. Green, think about it. It's the same song, but by connecting heart to heart with love, you can go further and better than if you were alone. So, all right, guys, <laughs> they're telling me to keep going. So, as we're going forward with this phase in our planet, if we go forward, even though we are physically separated, heart to heart, we can connect. And you know, when you live in alienation and isolation, separated in your mind and your heart from the others that you may be physically separated from, you are very much alone. There's only so far you can go. But when you connect heart to heart, we're getting that network, that grid, that mandala of love connection, then we can all go further, just like we're doing now at this moment. And the other song they want me to sing, a song that Pete used to sing to me when I was a child, and we would sing with him every time he was in town, every time we attended his concerts. This song, this song he would sing, and everyone would sing with him. We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I know that I do believe. We shall overcome someday. And he would go on to sing the verses going on to the whole wide world around. And then he would end with, We'll walk hand in hand. We'll walk hand in hand. We'll walk hand in hand. Today, today, oh, deep in my heart, I know that I do believe that we walk hand in hand today. I encourage you, listen to some Pete Seeger today. We just celebrated his 101st birthday. He was the living conduit for the mandala of global love. And if you think about, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm crying. The meaning of that song. Even though we are all physically apart, we have the ability to walk hand in hand today, the whole wide world around, and overcome whatever was before. This is flowing with third eye, with heart, with letting your third eye activate all your chakras so that you can be one with the grand interdimensional vision of love. He told us, he looked at that same ocean and winds that Neil Young saw, and instead of thinking, if I want that, I have to separate from all this, you just stay here. Instead, he said, when we connect, we can go so much further. There are no obstacles. And of course, there are obstacles, but we overcome them so that we can be hand in hand together. Oh, messages. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. 
So thank you for sharing that half hour with me of um, connecting with us. And just think, when we connect with each other heart to heart, and we open our crown chakras, activate our third eyes, and receive beautiful visions, that energy flows not just through us, but to all of us. So now, I mean, we are all connected right now. We are all connected. And don't worry, if you're watching this video later after the live stream, you are connected. This mandala is not going away. We have it for all of us that any one of us can tap back into at any time. <laughs> yes. yes, me singing. I go a little off key sometimes, but that's okay. I feel like that's just me being a little musically creative. So, um, again, guess what I'm having for dinner today? Romaine salad with parsley and cilantro. Okay, so let's begin our third eye work. As I said, the third eye is about seeing what you receive without personal interpretation. The interpretation will unfold for you. And again, if you want to see a master of that at work, look at my video last week with Carlos the Medium. Friend him, Carlos Medium is his Facebook name. He also does a lot of live streams like I do. And when you watch him at work, you will see the information goes in it unfolds to him, he grabs what it unfolds, accepts it, expresses what he's accepting, and it opens further. So um, uh, he did a reading for me, and he's like, Benita, I see uh, two older people, and they're, you know, working on a farm, but they're very relaxed and happy. They're, they're like, so happy and I'm like oh yeah yeah that's my grandparents and he's like and I see someone else um an older gentleman but I think that he's related to them like their son and he's in coveralls like um you know like workman's coveralls I'm like oh that's my uncle he was a mechanic he's like okay well and then the message opens up that was a message he gave to me a few years ago and then he opened up and had wonderful information about my grandparents and my uncle. What he was saying, what he saw without interpreting, he was just saying, it feels like he's their son. But at no point did he tell me, I think it's this, I feel it's that. It's just a, you know, like this is how the energy is flowing and what it's presenting no interpretation in his head just flowing through and once he got confirmation from me everything opened up now if i had said to him i don't know that doesn't feel right he would say well he like let it open up a little more he'd let it present a little more i don't know you know there's i see this i see that i see raspberries i'm like oh raspberries right that's my grandparents you know like so he just says a little more. Now, if he, if I never connect, I'm like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Like, maybe I never met my grandparents. Or maybe by the time I met them, they had sold their farm, so I never saw the farm. Uh, so he could go on and on and on and on. And I'm like, I don't really get it. He's like, well, this is the message they have, or this is what's flowing through. And he would share it with me anyway. And then later I would go home, because he knows what he's getting is the real deal. Then later I go home and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, that was my grandparents. Or I would go and talk to my mom. This is what Carlos said. And she'd go, oh, that was my parents. You never met them. But so this is why honor what you receive completely. There are times when you give messages, you know, that whoever you're giving it to will be like, no, 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 no. Even when you know, yes, yes, yes. So just always honor it. Um, when I studied mediumship skills, uh, when I took classes, there were times when I doubted the message I got. Yes, <laughs> yes, I did. And so I would demand that it, I'm like, I don't think this is right. So, 
And then what I got would end up being false and it wouldn't resonate. So I'm like, okay, let's go back to what I originally saw was, and I didn't really trust it. I'll tell them what I saw. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. So if you find yourself getting in your head and going off track, don't worry. Bring it back. We all do that. We all do that. Um, right. So third eye. As I said, your third eye opens this way, right? But in all ways around your head. So all the senses that you are receiving messages or sending out, you know, sometimes, oh, my hair. Sometimes things are happening behind you. Your third eye, if it's open and aware, picks up on. You know, like moms with the eyes in the back of our heads. Or, um, you know, you're just, and you turn around, and you're like, oh, I knew you were doing that. Uh, sometimes someone will walk in a room, and you know by looking at them what was happening before they walked through the door or what they're thinking of. If you're an empath, you may also feel it. Or you may see like their emotions rising up from them, or you may even see thought bubbles above their head, like they're cartoon creatures with words or images. That's third eye connecting to your natural empathic, telepathic, you know, clairvoyant, clairaudient, whatever. So third eye, the more your third eye is open, the more you can receive without judgment. The third eye also supports the crown chakra, right? So the third eye is like this all the way around, creating a cone that the crown chakra nestles into, like a cistern, okay? So the crown chakra and the third eye are powerfully connected. And then the third eye can fire stuff to any chakras. If your third eye receives a vision that you then want to work with your heart center, or your sacral center, or the solar plexus, or your throat. Like, I need to speak up about this. Or, okay, I'm going to fill this with love send, before I send it out. Or, oh, my God, I just got a vision that's putting me to action. Or, I just got a vision. At the same time, my gut instinct exploded with an inspiration, and the two go together. Or your third eye and your root chakra. Suddenly, I'm feeling very grounded. And, like, angels are helping connect through me into Earth. Like, it's all, you know, it's all interactive. Where your crown chakra and your third eye come together, that little point in the center of your head, is your pineal gland. And I encourage you to do some research on it. Um, <laughs> I'm such a technical like literal person um i'm always trying it's a pineal gland physical or energetic and the answer is both it's both and oh the mail just arrived um not that i'm gonna touch it anytime soon without fully sanitizing it <laughs> um so i just mentioned that because you may have seen the mail truck went on the road past me behind <laughs> so the pineal gland when your third eye and your crown chakra are open, the pineal gland sparks. It literally puts out light, puts out energy. It is a physical gland. It's also an energetic, very active gland. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. And see, the Wonder Dog needs a bath today. She's smelling very uh, doggy-like. <laughs> so here's my little heart chakra in living form right here. Okay. Um, let's see. You can't be on the microphone. All right. So when the pineal gland sparks, it's creating energy. And that energy powers up your other chakras. Okay? And it makes more things happen. We'll talk about pineal gland in two weeks. Next week, we'll talk about crown and then pineal gland. So when you open up your crown chakra and the energy comes in and you open up your third eye and you're ready to receive, that pineal gland sparks up and it powers everything up. 
So that's something that uh, over the next few weeks, you'll develop increasing awareness and a feeling of connection to. Um, a couple of things about energy flow with third eye. If you are grounded with your root chakra deep into earth, you have, of course, more stability, structural stability for receiving potent third eye visions. And you're also, it's easier to receive visions for um, the planet for others. If you are not grounded, you can receive visions for self. You can float around with it. It will not be as potent. Now, that's not saying it's a bad thing. It's good to play both ways just to get the feeling of it. Sometimes you just want to nip up, grab a little vision, play with it, and then go on. You don't always need to be deeply grounded. But if you're looking for potent, powerful, meaningful visions, you have to be grounded. And if you're looking for visions that will help others, you have to be grounded so that all the energy can be flowing. The other thing is some people feel like if they have blocked chakras, their third eye will not work for them. I can get visions except about love because I have a block in my heart chakra. That's nonsense. Um, the only thing that blocks you from getting visions is your belief that you're blocking. Uh, in fact, the visions can help clear the debris in your heart chakra with very little effort. So imagine if you are a mountain. You are whatever mountain you want to be. You might be mountain in Siberia or in the desert or in a jungle. Be, pick any mountain you want. And on this mountain, there is a beautiful flowing river. This river comes up from, it could be snow melt, or it could be a well, a cistern deep in the ground rising up, you know, fresh spring. Uh, it could be several other water sources also coming together. But there's this beautiful flowing river that might have waterfalls and pools all the way down, wider in some areas, deeper in others, going down your mountain. A storm comes along and knocks some debris into the river. Maybe some fallen trees, boulders, an earthquake shakes things up. But the water is flowing. It's not going to stop flowing. It will find a way to flow down the mountain of you. Additionally, you're not really a mountain. You're a person with hands, feet. You can go over there and remove the debris because that debris is not you. It's debris so that you can bring the flow back to the way it was. The energy never stops flowing, and you have the ability to clear debris by your own decision to do so. Understand that. So even if you have blocks in your heart chakra, you can still fill your heart chakra with divine energy. This may actually help releasing some of the blocks, or it may help you understand why the blocks are here to begin with, or um, it may help you uh, become friends with the blocks, or just honor them and say, you know what? This block is going to be here for a while, but that's okay. I can still do my work even with the blocks there. Right. Let's do a meditation with our third eye. Remember, third eye is not about looking for anything. It's about receiving. And when I say, what do you see or what do you sense? 
it doesn't matter. You don't need to actually see like 3D visual stuff. Um, it can be what you hear, what you smell, what suddenly springs forward in your awareness. Uh, does a song suddenly come in? Or maybe some sitcom you saw as a kid. The story, like, it doesn't matter. Whatever you receive, in whatever form it comes in, that's what you see. Okay. So everyone get comfortable. And um, it doesn't matter if your eyes are open or closed. But if they're open, just let them be a little spaced out. Allow your body to relax. If you find there's any tension or pain or discomfort, yeah, you can move a little if you want. You can also give your body permission to resolve itself. Invite the energy in your body to flow. Invite your feet to relax so that the energy in your body flows down through your hips, down your legs, down through your feet, into earth. If you feel there's any stagnant energy in your body, give it permission to release and flow. Invite the top of your head to relax. Open up. You may find it feeling light and airy as divine energy comes flowing in through the top of your head, filling your head, your face, flowing down through your neck, your shoulders, your arms. Energy flowing down your spine, down your body, down your legs, down through your feet, deep into earth. If you feel any pain or discomfort in your head, acknowledge it and give it permission to resolve itself. If you feel any pain or discomfort in your body, acknowledge it. Give it permission to resolve itself. Invite your feet to be very relaxed. Invite your feet Connecting with your root chakra to just spread the energy far and wide so that you are flowing, flowing, and spreading out all of the divine love that's flowing into your body, through your body, just spreads out deep. You are the mountain, this energy is the river, and it is spreading out deep to tributaries, to the ocean, through the earth's floor, deep into earth. And invite the top of your head to relax and open up. To be very, very receptive as all of this beautiful divine energy flows in like the top of the mountain river. It may be flowing from underground energy sources. It may be flowing from the universe, from nature, the clouds. No melt. The energy may be from the stars, from light beings, from God, source, from other dimensions. Write this energy to flow in, 
flow through, flow out, may also be emanating from your body in all directions, like mist rising up from the moving water. It's so beautiful. You are surrounded by those who love you from the non-physical. You are surrounded by your guides, your soul family, your soul. Your soul is always connected to you. Your soul and your guardian angel are always with you. And they are always here to help you, to guide you, whenever you are receptive and open. People you love who have passed and the animals are here. You are surrounded by love and protection. So for now, invite your soul Invite your guardian angel to be the gatekeepers of any energy coming in for you. They are already connected with you. They are already here for you. Always. For your entire life. Invite them to just surround you with protection. Be nestled there above your crown chakra so that any messages you receive have to be checked out by them, by them and of a frequency that they find acceptable. Do you feel how protected you are? Open up your crown chakra. Open your crown chakra. You'll feel it naturally opens just with the thoughts. Invite your soul. Come into your mind. Come into your mind and just be there in your pineal gland your crown, your third eye, just to be in there, flowing around, sharing energy. Just feel the energy of your soul's connection and allow your third eye, your crown, to relax and accept. Receive whatever your soul chooses to share with you. Acknowledge it, accept it, and receive it. If you find your awareness drifting, just bring it back. Say, I connect with my soul. I accept whatever my soul chooses to share with me. I receive it. I accept it. What more is there? Ask your soul, is there anything else for you to receive at this moment? Mm -hmm. 
now your soul would like to make an introduction. Your soul is bringing someone or something or somewhere, somewhen, somehow through to you. It may be an animal totem. It may be a memory. It may be a vision of the future. It might be a collective, an angel, another dimension, or just a frequency, a color. Whatever your soul introduces to you to open your crown, invite it to flow in and fill out your third eye. Acknowledge, accept, and receive whatever comes forward to you. Wonderful. Now, we are going to take you and your soul and whomever else is with you on a little journey. Invite them to come along. As we rise up, back to that mountain of you with your ever-flowing river. Let us go somewhere on or near or however high up you are comfortable, to the top of the mountain or wherever going towards the top that you feel good. Take your soul To your mountain and settle someplace on or near the top as close as you feel comfortable and settled. Let your senses expand out. What sort of mountain do you have? Is it the same as it was before or has it evolved, altered in any way? What's the temperature like? How does it feel on your skin? Is it daytime, nighttime, somewhere between sunrise or sunset? Is there a breeze? Do you hear any sounds? Birds singing? Crickets chirping. Any animals howling or baying. The spot where you're at. Are you in a field or in the woods? A waterfall? Like, where are you right now? Become acquainted with your surroundings and how comfortable you feel. How perfect it is for you to be right here. Connect with this space. And notice how your soul feels so connected here as well. Look out at the vista around you. What does it look like? 
the view ranging far and wide around your mountain. Whatever you see, whatever comes into your awareness is perfect. Look to your soul again. Your soul says to you, I have for you a message and a gift. Would you like to receive them? And then open yourself to receive what your soul has to share with you. You may discuss whatever you get with your soul. Now your soul says to you, I am bringing someone here to you who will help you with the next stage of your daily journey. Open your awareness to see who comes forward to be before you. It may be an animal, a nature being, angel, light being, someone you love who passed, someone comes forward to you and stands beside you and your soul. Who is it? And allow your soul to explain why this one is here for you. Is there any work or tasks or goals you have that you are going forward to that this one, your soul, these gifts and messages are to help you with? Your life path at this moment and in everyday life is opening before you. You might look in your vista, you see your life path right there shining bright. Do you feel like you are normally on your life path? Or have you gone off a little bit, which is completely normal? Is it time now to be on your path? Or to be off in the brambles on the side for a while? Or having a little vacation before you get back to your path? Ask your companions for any final message, guidance, and how you can connect with them anytime you want.
connect with them now, resonate with the energy so that you can return to this rapport. It's just a request, calling out with your mind at any time. And then come back here, the here and now, to your body, your home, to our connection. I'm in this space where the cold wind doth blow. And I've got a shivering pup in my arms. Allow your senses to reconnect with your body, with your mind. And as you are doing this, invite the visions that you receive to continue to unfurl, to open. Allow the visions to remain even as you are reconnecting with self. As you stretch your body out, whew, here you go, back into this space. I hope that was good for you guys. And now, it is freezing cold here, and this dog is getting super cold and wiggly. So it's time for us to end our session together. What I would like you to do is sit down and write or record yourself talking, like either in a video recorder on your computer or an app on your phone or something everything that just happened. So you can write it down or you can speak it. And allow yourself to space out while you're doing this because all the information you received will start opening and unfolding. You may find that you start writing things that you didn't experience now. That's okay. That's why for me, sometimes I write, usually I'll video record myself so that I can just space out and be like blah, 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 blah. And a five-minute experience might end up being a half-hour recording. Um, so whichever way you want. But I encourage you at this time, while you're still very connected, to report your experience in any way you're comfortable. Thank you. Thank you. And Mitzi thanks you. I love you guys. Um, and I'll put while I still have you here holding you captive, I'll put in the comments the link for tomorrow. Tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time, 12 to 2.30, we're doing a free live stream on self-care. And we would like you to invite or share this with the uh, wonderful mothers of your life, divine mothers. Really share it with anyone. Self-care is for everyone. And then uh, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, I'll be back with Remember, Wednesday nights, we learn how to receive messages, and Saturday mornings, we learn to develop the, become the energy grid that we need to be to meaningfully receive and utilize messages. So the Wednesdays and Saturdays, you know, work hand in hand. Um, and so this Wednesday, I'm not, I'm not sure right now. We just finished like a, crystal ball and scrying, and then we had Carlos the Medium join us. I'm going to have to think about what we'll do next. I'm not sure what we'll do. Maybe we'll play with uh, runes or something like that. Runes are always fun. Um, runes and chumpy stones and stuff like that. Or, um, okay. Or maybe I'll teach you guys how to do uh, card reading. 
Yeah, we might do like card reading and then going into like runes and stones and uh, I Ching and, you know, stuff like that. Like how to use different tools, interpretive tools. Uh, so either way, no matter what, it'll be fun. And as you know, I got a household. Okay, dog must be free. I got a room full of every kind of tool we could hope for. Um, so thank you guys. I love you. I adore you. I hope to see you tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our self-care. I'll teach you about regenerating your cellular well-being. And, um, and record your, record your experience. And you'll see if you record your experience like now or today, you will see like how your third eye just opens up. And let's see. Okay, thank you. Love you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.